Today I'm going to demonstrate the Harrison semi-automatic sock nutting machine. This is a beautiful machine which is based, if I understand correctly, on the Harrison Sunet model. The difference between the Sunet and the semi-automatic is that the semi-automatic has a series of levers connected to cams which help you to raise needles up out of work and push them back down into work when making heels and toes. The machine is incredibly easy to operate, very smooth, and it does speed up the process of making heels and toes quite significantly. Okay, just to give you an overview, the mechanism works on two groups of, let's call them levers. This large lever over here, which you can see is put in and out of action in that manner. This is the lever that engages with the larger of the set of levers that are attached to the camshell. So you'll see there are two larger levers and two smaller levers. Each of these is connected to a cam which is visible from the exterior of the machine and these cams operate in either lifting needles up out of work or pushing them back down into work. This lever over here in the front of the machine is used when you want to put needles back down into work. This lever at the back of the machine is used when you want to put needles up out of work. So they are used at different times in the making of the heel. So if you look at the machine, I have now knit, cuffed down the part of the sock to the point where I'm ready to start making the heel now. And this is the last round that I'm going to knit now of the pre-heel. You'll see that I still have ribbon needles in work on the instep part of the sock. I'm going to crank around until, whoops, and now see I have actually inadvertently engaged that system. So I'm going to put that cam back in place and take this lever at the back out of work. So I'm going to knit the last row or round of the pre-heel until the last ribbon needle at the left hand side of the machine has closed its latch. I'm now going to take out the drive pin and now we'll prepare to do the actual heel knitting. So what I'll do is crank forward far enough that a knob on the side of the camshell here, which is the needle lifter knob, comes into place approximately where the right hash mark or three o'clock point is on the cam, um, on the cylinder. It is a little bit of a guess because you have to unscrew the knob and lift the cam and see which needle lifts first. So you may be able to see on the video, I've accurately judged it and the first needle past the three o'clock mark or the right hash mark has started to lift. So I'll tighten that knob on the side here and now as I crank forward all of the needles in the back half of the cylinder are going to raise up until the left hash mark or nine o'clock. Once I get to this side and I see that the needle just before the 9 o'clock position or left hash mark has started to raise, I'm going to undo the screw knob and I'm going to tighten it out of action. Make sure that it is low enough that it doesn't hit any needle butts because it will definitely make your machine jam. Okay, now I'm going to raise up these last few needles before the left side hash mark, the three o'clock, um, the nine o'clock or left hash mark over here and make sure that the needles that are at the front of the machine are all press, uh, pushed down properly into work. Okay, now it's time for us to engage the semi-function. Remember this is the part of the heel where we are going to be decreasing so we'll be raising up needles on every pass and the way to activate the cam system that does that is incredibly simple. This lever here is just pushed into action. So what will happen is the larger lever on here on the right hand side which is connected to the cam underneath it will strike this part of the main lever. 
that will allow the cam to drop down into position where it can then raise the first needle at the right hand side. Now the semi-automatic machines make a no wrap heel. However, I do like to wrap the first needle and engage my heel spring. Make sure your heel forks are in place, correctly placed. And as I come around cranking backwards, watch what happens now. The needle at the right hand side is going to raise up. When I get to this side, the mechanism that works on this side is going to have, which will be this cam, is going to have contact with this part of this lever and it will do the same thing as I crank forwards again. So let's have a look. There we go. This lever has made contact with the upright over here. It's released the cam and now watch that needle raise up. There's the needle raised. Let's crank backwards. This cam comes around, this lever engages over here, drops the cam and now when we come forwards it will lift that needle in front of the left hash mark. Again at the start of the heel I like to wrap the first needle and now it will go a lot quicker because now we're going to go back and forth, back and forth, only adjusting heel forks as we need to, but doing nothing further to the needles. So as I crank forward, there you can see the needle come up. Click, up, click, up, click, up, click. And now as I go forward, that needle will raise. I'm just going to adjust my heel forks. Okay, again, when the, this lever came around and made contact with this part of the main lever, it dropped the cam, it is going to raise this needle over here. There we go. important to keep your heel forks correctly positioned to prevent dropping stitches and whether you use a v-hook or three heel forks as I do make sure that that's always something you're aware of and thinking about okay again we're nearing to the point where we're going to start the increase part of the heel we have a few more needles that need to be raised up out of work Now, on the right hand side, at the heel turn point, which I've marked on the fins in red, you can see that the last needle that needed to be raised has now come up out of work. And this, the very last needle that must come up for the first part of the heel is this one over here, just in front of the left heel mark. Now, we know that when this lever engaged with this part of the main lever, it allowed the cam to drop. So on the forward stroke, cranking forward, this cam over here will lift up this needle. But we also know that we need to start putting needles back into work at the right hand side. So at the point where the last needle is yet to be raised, 
your cam has been activated, you are going to put this large lever out of work and you are going to engage the lever at the front of the work. So this cam will raise up the last needle out of work. This lever will activate the cam that is going to drop the first needle on the right hand side back into work. So two things will happen on this first pass. That needle is raised up, you can see. Now watch this needle over here gets pulled down into work. Same story as we go back. This needle is pulled down into work. And in this way, it's very quick and easy to do the second half of the heel. Again, make sure that your heel forks are properly placed. Just make sure the right one is okay. Right, and now we can start. The only thing to make sure is that your latches stay open when you make the turn, so when you crank backwards and forwards. Okay, check your heel forks. Okay. okay, we're nearly at the point where the heel is done. Second last needle, pull down into work in the left. And now we are going to have the last needle be pulled down into work at the right. And again, I like to wrap that needle rather than just let it go onto the latch. Here we go. Okay, a little tug. And your last needle at the left hand side is now back in work. And again, I like to wrap that. And now the heel is basically complete. So you can basically put this lever back down so that it's not going to activate any cams. We also need to put the drive pin back as we'll start ribbing again. And once you stop at the six o'clock position with the yarn carrier, it's as simple as putting your needles back into work, making sure that the latches are open and cranking forward. I still have my heel spring engaged, so I'm going to crank forward until I get to the right hash mark. Take the heel spring out, make sure all your latches are open, and there we go. Your heel is done, and now you'll just continue on cranking the rest of the sock. The toe is made in exactly the same way, exactly the same way, except I tend to take the ribbon off of the toe because at that point I'm finished with all the ribbing. So that's how the Harrison semi-automatic works. It's a really, really lovely machine. And 
it's smooth and cranks so effortlessly and so easily and I hope you can see how easy it is to actually use what looks to be a very complicated system. Once you've done this um, on the Vidun, you'll see that the principles are exactly the same. The Vidun Semi-Automatic has all the cams housed within a bulge on the side of the camshell. So although it looks different visually, the, the principles are exactly the same. I actually find that this machine works a bit smoother to me than my Verdun. I really like it and I find the mechanism to be really ingenious. I, I think it's amazing that they've thought of, uh, of something so, um, so clever to use.